Are you thinking about selling your home? Maybe you're wondering about what you can do to improve the curb appeal of your house. This week, we'll talk about the second part of the curb appeal series, how to primp your front door and the area around it so that it speaks to today's home buyer. And we're starting right now. Hey there, and welcome back to my channel. My name is Harry Moore, and I'm a realtor in the Washington DC metro area. I post new videos every week about all things real estate in the DMV. The buyer and their agent meet out in the street. They stand there looking at the house, gathering their first impressions, and they like what they see. Next step is to get the key and get inside. The buyers are eager. They walk up to the front door and there's a lockbox. While the agent's fiddling with their card or their smartphone or however they get access to the keys, the buyer's standing there looking at the front door. They're excited and they want to get inside. They've poured over the online pictures repeatedly. They've shared it with friends and family online. This could be the one. They'll be standing there for 15, 30, maybe even 45 seconds waiting to get into the house. What do they see? How does that make them feel? Here's my list of top things to do so that your front door area is attractive and welcoming. I was thinking about this video the other day as I was driving home. When I got out of the car, I had a flash. My front door area is a classic example of what not to do. So I'm going to pull the skeletons out of the closet and use pictures of my house to show you the things to avoid. Luckily, I'm not planning on selling anytime soon. We'll start with the door itself. I'm a big believer in the return on investment of paint, just about anywhere, and the front door is no exception. If your door is painted, then you may want to freshen it up, or even change the color. Here's a picture of my front door. I won't take any credit for the door color. The last owners painted it just before they put it on the market. I hope they got a good deal on the paint, because it's an awful color. Benjamin Moore has a very nice color finder page on their website. You can use it to test out color choices on a variety of door styles. There's a link below. If your door is pre-finished or stained wood, then a good cleaning will be in order. You should also take a look at the storm door if you have one. Make sure that the hardware is clean and not tarnished, that the glass is clean with no cracks in it, and finally check that screen if there's one installed. Make sure that it isn't ripped or dirty. If you look at the pictures of my storm door, it's tarnished, it's dirty, but at least the screen's not ripped. Now let's talk about hardware. Your doorknob, mail slot, door knocker, numbers, or anything like that should be cleaned and polished. If it doesn't show well after that, then replace it. And don't have mismatched hardware. Again, here's an example of what not to do these days. Brushed nickel and other similar finishes are quite popular, but if your house is very traditional, then polished brass or bronze are just fine. In another video, I share some great tips about how to make the house look its best from the street. And I mentioned my pet peeve about house numbers. If you'd like to watch it, click above. I think it's a good idea to have house numbers that fit the style of the house and that they complement the finish of the door hardware. It's kind of like wearing brown shoes and a brown belt. They don't have to be exactly the same or too matchy-matchy, but they should be of a similar type of finish. Also, make sure they're clean and not broken or crooked. You don't want something like this greeting your buyers when they come to visit. Oh, and don't forget the doormat beat up, worn down doormat should be replaced. I don't have a doormat, so I can't show you a picture of that. Another thing that people sometimes forget is the front door light. You can start out with making sure that the light fixture is clean, that the bulb isn't burnt out, and that it's properly sized for the fixture. If you want to take it up a notch, then think about replacing it with something that complements the rest of the hardware in the doorway area. It gives things a much more finished look. 
It's always good to add a little splash of color to the doorway area as well. You can use a couple of potted plants or check out this DIY vertical wall planner that I found when I was doing research for this video. It's very festive and has a different look to it. I put the link in the comments below. Last, but certainly not least, make sure that everything is clean. No cobwebs or clumps of mud lingering around the front door. So those are some of the key tips to make sure that your front door looks great when the buyers walk up. You've learned a few important items to look at when you're prepping the front door area to go on the market. Once you've caught the buyer's eye online, you want to make sure that first face-to-face -face meeting with your house goes well, so that the buyers are excited and want to make it their new home. I'm Harry Moore with Keller Williams Capital Properties, and I want to say thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If you like what you saw, please mash that like button. Happy thumbs are most appreciated. And if you know someone who might be interested in buying or selling real estate in the DC area, please share it with them. If you want to see more videos about real estate in the DMV, then subscribe and ring that bell so that you'll be updated whenever new videos come out. Make it a great day, and I'll see you again soon.